Hey, it's Amanda and Brandon Neely again at Grandma's Wealth Wisdom. Now, obviously, we are not Grandma. Um, I don't look like her. You don't look like her. Um, but we think that she has some really great stuff to share with us. We like to follow her time-tested wisdom about managing uh, cash flow and leveraging assets. And today we're going to be talking about investing and the stock market kind, uh, the Wall Street kind, and particularly talking about a promise that the stock market could never deliver on. Now, you might have heard people talk about the power of compound interest. You need to get compound interest working in your favor. The sooner you can get compound interest working in your favor, the better. You might have even heard compound interest referred to as one of the wonders of the world, which is sometimes attributed to Albert Einstein, but you should fact check that on Google. You might find out that he didn't actually <laughs> say that. But like, can the stock market really give us compound interest? Um, and what could be better than compound interest? There's a thing called uninterrupted compound interest, where you don't interrupt the compounding of your interest, just like it sounds. And that's pretty cool. But could the stock market give you that? Now, the stock market says, uh, if you talk to people, that it gives you uninterrupted compound interest. And if you just mm. buy and hold, you will get growth on your money that you can count on. But we're going to expose that today and say that that's a promise that they cannot deliver on. Now, Wall Street tries to make it seem like they're making the world a better place. You're, um, and they're in particular going to make your world better. You just need to put money into your 401k, your IRA, your brokerage account, somehow get them money and they'll take good care of it and make sure that it's there for you in the future. But we all know how the market really works. It goes up and down like a roller coaster. You never really know what your stocks are going to be worth on any given day. And, you know, they're also like taking fees, right? Like they're not doing it for free or for charity. Um, and maybe that could be breaking your compound interest too. We're going to get into all of that today and also talk about an alternative that might surprise you uh, that probably your neighbors are doing. They're just not telling you they're doing. But before we get into that, I want to share a little story that may seem a little out of left field, a little of our own my own experience. So I'm all about being a change maker. I wanted to make a difference in the world. I wanted to change the world. It's always been in my uh, DNA. So going from the military and the Marine Corps to doing the music industry. So I, I went in the music industry because I wanted to make a difference. I knew that music changed people's lives and I wanted to be a part of that. And so I got into the music industry and uh, I got to meet some of the biggest names in uh, the industry in music. And uh, what I learned, though, was it's not all it's cracked up to be. I actually had to sign an NDA non-disclosure non -disclosure agreement, agreement uh, on what I saw or did not see. And I saw a lot of things. Uh, let's just say. Um, there's people in the news who have been um, on trial on trial and things like that, that I've seen things that I'm like, well, I don't want to be a part of that. Uh, and I got out of that because of, again, sex, drugs, rock and roll. That was what was said in some videos or music was different than what I actually saw behind the curtain. Uh, it was very different than what was shown. And then I got into, after I got out of that, I got into the banking industry and was in that industry for quite a bit. And I would say I was a little kind of prophetic in some regards because I felt like something was off. And this was in 2006. Now, you should um, know Brandon is, was not a banker. He was no. not a teller. He was just the IT guy that yeah. helped the bankers use their Blackberries back in the day yeah, yeah. or fix their computer problems, stuff like that. So Brandon was kind of behind the scenes seeing what was going on at these banks. Yeah. And I saw one of the banks that, that actually was closed during 08, uh, 2008 that it closed 
and they were doing some shady business. And I was like, man, something, this is this. You were crazy. there in 2006, 2007. Yeah. You saw yeah. this. You, this is some crazy you found stuff. a new job, right? <laughs> uh, I was out. I was out before everything happened and, and things hit the fan. But that really showed me there's something else going on. There's something. And I was an inside man, if you will, seeing it. And then found out that the guy who ran this bank actually probably retired to an island somewhere. I would bet you. Yeah. Um, but anyway. This is, this is Brandon's like life though, that he's super skeptical. He's always looking for, you know, he sees a picture on social media and he's trying to be like, yeah, that's totally mm -hmm. fake. Here's probably what was really going on. You know, stuff like that. And in particular with Wall Street, they look all glitzy, but if you try to look behind the curtain, figure out what's really going on, um, at least we have been totally surprised. You know, we didn't get into the financial industry with knowing like all the things we've learned about how things really work. And maybe we wouldn't have gotten into it if we had known this beforehand. Um, but like what really is going on behind the scenes? And, you know, can can Wall Street really deliver on the promises that they're giving? And to explore that, we got to get into this idea of compound interest a little further. And mm -hmm. we're going to actually take it outside the financial world so that you can get a good picture of what it really is. And you decide for yourself whether the stock market could ever give you this. So what is compound interest? A tree grows with like compound interest, <laughs> compound growth. The rings on the tree get bigger and bigger and the bigger the tree is, the bigger the next ring is gonna be because there's more mass to cover and the tree keeps growing. Maybe some years it grows more, some years less, but it's mm -hmm. always growing. And if it's not growing, like any plant, it's dying, right? So um, as long as the tree is growing, it's growing with that compound growth. And it can be, may be slowed, um, but if it ever stops growing, the tree actually starts to die. Compare that with a car. The minute you drive that car off the lot, it starts depreciating in value. <laughs> actually a huge amount the minute you drive off and then over time buy more and more. And unless you've got a classic car, which sometimes can go up and down in value, your brand new car or a used car, whatever you bought is just depreciating. That is kind of the opposite of compound growth. It's maybe compound Lost <laughs> until you get to zero, right? So then add on this concept of uninterrupted compound growth. You know, the tree grows every year. Maybe some years it grows less, some years it grows more, but it's always growing. What would stop, like, no, let's go back to the financial industry and you're looking at your pile of money, whether it's a little or a lot, uh, it's up to you, right? Um, what could stop it from growing with uninterrupted compound growth? Turns out there's four things that happen with the stock market that interrupt your compound growth on your money. The first one is fees. Now, there's a really cool tool called the FINRA Fund Analyzer where you can go to whatever mutual fund or that can kind of fund thing that you're using to invest your money in your 401k or outside your 401k, whatever, wherever. And you can look and see what are the real fees that are being charged there. Or you can look at what we call the 1031, sorry, the 1231 statement, which is your final statement of the year, December 31st, 1231 statement, and see potentially what the fees are. Depending on your company, they may or may not disclose all of those there. Um, but you can see those fees are taken away from your sum on a regular basis and they're breaking your compound interest. So that's the first one, fees. The next thing is volatility. We all, you know, if you watch the stock market, um, maybe pull up the app on your phone or something like that, you see it's going like this, up and down and up and down. And particularly like if you have a pretty high average rate of return on your funds within the stock market, that typically means they're going really up and down and they're having some big swings. And that breaks your uninterrupted compound growth. It interrupts the compound growth of your money. Let's take a quick example. Brandon, you, I'm, let's do a fun, fun uh, exercise. math exercise. Okay. okay, so let's pretend I've got a mutual fund. Sorry, I hit my mic. Let's pretend I've got a mutual fund and you're gonna give me $10,000 to invest that into a mutual fund. 
Okay, $10,000. Yay! We're gonna set aside fees for a second. I'm just gonna put that $10,000 into this mutual fund. And then a year later, I come back to you, Brandon, and I say, congratulations, I doubled your money. Um, you had 100% rate of return on your money this year. So how much do you have in that mutual fund? $20,000. $20,000, right, it doubled. You're really happy with me, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I, you keep the money in that mutual fund. The next year I come back to you and I say, Brandon, I owe you a big apology. You now, I lost half of your money. You had a negative 50% return on your funds. How much do you have now? Uh, $10,000. 10000 yep. Yeah. And are you happy with me? No, I don't know if you'd come to me and tell me that. <laughs> right, that's true. <laughs> I might try to not talk about it. But let's say, but I convince you to keep your money with me. I promise I'll turn it around. <coughs> <coughs> so, year three, we keep the, that 10000 in the mutual fund. I come back to you at the end of year three and I say, congratulations, Brandon. I doubled your money again. Got you a 100% rate of return this past year. How much money do you have? I'm back to 20,000. Back to 20,000. Great. You're, are you happy with me? Yeah. I mean, uh, I was happy with you the first year. Okay. So we're happy with me again. Um, but then let's say the end of year four, I come back to you and I got the same spiel from year two. I lost half your money. You had a negative 50% return. How much money do you have? I am back to $10,000. Back to exactly what you started with, yeah. right? So we had these major swings. But guess what? Your statement from my mutual fund company says that you got a, a positive rate of return on those funds. So what was your average rate of return over those years? So you take the plus 100, the minus 50, the plus 100, and the minus 50. What's your total there? Uh, 150, 150 would be 100. 100, 100. yep. Yeah. Divide by four for four years would be 25. 25. You got an average rate of return of 25%. Wow, that's huge. That's amazing. Everybody wants that. Right, right. Who wouldn't want that mutual fund? But how much more money do you have? Uh, according to the example, I made nothing. Right. That's volatility, right? The You might see an average rate of return on a statement that you get, but it could be totally meaningless depending on what actually happened with those funds. Now... We got to think about, you can't buy and hold that money in that mutual fund forever. You're eventually going to need it, whether it's in retirement, f to buy groceries, or, you know, for whatever. And frankly, when, you're, when you have that money in that mutual fund, it's just wealth on paper. You don't actually have a tangible asset, um, and it's going up and down, any increase in that wealth, you don't actually realize until you sell your stocks mm -hmm. and then you've got the actual wealth there and then when and if you do sell it then you're going to spend that money and you lose whatever money that grow, that money could have grown into um, with compound interest and whatever and that's called opportunity cost you're losing the opportunity of what that money could have grown to which is a cost um, mm. and so that's the the third way that wall street breaks your uninterrupted compound growth is you actually, you got to spend that money somehow, sometime, some way. And then the fourth thing is our favorite little topic called taxes. I don't know if it's our favorite topic. <laughs> I was totally joking. Either your money's in a brokerage account and you're paying taxes every single year on the growth or anytime you buy and sell, or maybe it's protected in a tax deferred a retirement fund and so you only have to pay taxes when you take the money out later on but you're still going to owe taxes that is uh, except for maybe if it's in a Roth or whatever but that tax breaks your compound interest as well it eats up a portion you know actually if it actually grew with compound interest the IRS is going to get their portion of your compound interest from the growth on those funds as well so those are the four ways that Wall Street can't really deliver on that prom promise of uninterrupted compound growth. Uh, fees, volatility, lost opportunity cost, and taxes. So what's the alternative to the market? We found, again, grandma's strategy that really uh, hits on those four things. It uh, eliminates the taxes, or at least uh, mitigates those. It helps lost opportunity. You will be able to 
build and have some opportunity, again, that we shared in the previous video, uh, it reduces fees and the volatility. The volatility is not there anymore. So, um, yeah, grandma strategy is a time tested tool, a financial product that's been around for a generation and has ha helped Americans to reduce fees, um, maybe even totally avoid them over time, uh, not, and keep their money growing without any volatility, reduce their tax burden and keep their money growing even while they use it. And that might sound too good to be true but it is true. And in fact, this product has been around for over 160 years and helping Americans of all backgrounds. Um, in fact, back in grandma's day, about half of Americans were using this product. Um, and just because it isn't talked about anymore doesn't mean that there aren't people doing it and using it. It's just become... There are. There's plenty of them. Yeah. They just happen to be... Uh... A little bigger, wealthier, maybe. Maybe, possibly. but it's all, it could also be your grandma or yeah. <laughs> or your next door neighbor. Um, but people don't talk about it. I think partly because there's a lot of haters out there that are so used to what's become the conventional wisdom that's really just existed since the 1980s, and they bash grandma strategy and the very like the people who promote the same kind of thing um, but if you're willing to explore and consider something that's not become the conventional but is actually more of a time-tested more traditional type way to build your wealth and still use it to make major purchases or for retirement or that kind of thing we'd love to help you make sure that you get the right version of grandma strategy for you. It's definitely a custom tailored thing. It's not like buying a mutual fund or buying an ETF um, exchange traded fund. You are, um, you want to find something that is custom tailored for you, like a custom tailored suit or uh, that kind of thing. Um, and it's really almost like building a house the way that we build these. We want to architect them and make sure that they're right for you. So we're willing to do all the math, show you what it looks like, and if you like what we put together, we can talk about the next steps from there. The way to find out more is to go to grandmaswealthwisdom.com. Uh, you can go to grandmaswealthwisdom.com slash free, get some more free resources, some more education that'll help you, you know, on the right path of your financial journey. Or if you're ready to talk with us on the phone, just go straight to grandmaswealthwisdom.com slash call, and you can set up a no obligation meeting with us there. Um, on uh, directly on our calendars. So that's all we got to say about the market. Um, <laughs> there's thanks, plenty more there's to plenty say. Plenty more to go. Enough for this course. video. <laughs> but uh, thanks for watching and including us on your financial journey towards freedom, towards helping you reach a smart, stable financial future. Until next time, keep watching and listening to Grandma's Wealth Wisdom. We'll talk to you next time.